Welcome. Thanks for coming to the Weave Online User Group. Uh, this is a weekly series that we've been uh, doing over the last couple of years. Uh, we have just kicked off our sort of summer to the rest of the year season uh, with a lot of great speakers. And we are here on almost every Tuesday. I think we're getting pretty booked up. So it looks like we'll be pretty good barring any holidays. So come check us out um, on Tuesdays at 10. Today, of course, is a Wednesday because we have a special Lug because uh, Lucas on our team, uh, if some of you saw him, he was presenting on Cube ADM yesterday, but he has a new project called uh, Ignite. So this is our special Lug on that. So today's title is Introducing Ignite, the GitOps VM. And we have Lucas Kallstrom here, from, who is a developer experience engineer on our WeWork te WeWork's team. A lot of you probably know him as a SIG leader and as a CNCF ambassador and in many other roles in the Kubernetes community. Uh, we also are very fortunate to have Radu Weiss here from Amazon, who uh, is part of the Firecracker team. So you'll see, if you haven't heard about Ignite, that um, it works with Firecracker. So it makes sense to have him explain some of that as well. Uh, and my name is Tom O. I'm head of the developer experience team here at Weaveworks. Uh, and I also should mention, we also have Stacy here, who is our community manager, making sure that these great events happen and that they get run smoothly. So. Thanks for your patience. I'll do just a little minute about Weaveworks. So um, if you haven't heard of us, please help spread the word. So our company is called Weaveworks. We're a startup based in London, San Francisco, New York, Berlin, and we have distributed members around the world. If you've heard of RabbitMQ, then our founders are actually people who created RabbitMQ and sold the company, our CEO, CTO, and some of our engineers. Uh, so we're a VC-funded startup um, by Excel Partners, Google Ventures, and a few others. So our sort of involvement in the Kubernetes space makes sense in that way. So a lot of, as we'll be talking about, an open source project today, a lot of our background is in open source. Uh, our first project was called WeaveNet, which is one of the premier projects out there um, to network your Kubernetes clusters. Uh, then we created Cortex, which is now in the CNCF, which sort of extends and makes more scalable um, Prometheus. Uh, and now we have Flux, which just went into the CNCF sandbox just the other day. And so that does automated deployments. We also have Weave Scope for observability, Weave Flagger uh, for progressive delivery, and actually we've got several more projects out there. So if you haven't heard of these, you should check these out. They are all very, very interesting projects. Um, and also we are a company with paid products. So uh, one of the products we've had for the longest time is a SaaS product called Weave Cloud. Uh, and it uh, helps you do Kubernetes, Kubernetes cluster management, uh, monitoring using Prometheus slash Cortex um, and automated deployments. So uh, if you're interested in that, check out Weave Cloud. Um, we built Weave Cloud on Kubernetes on AWS. Uh, so we've had four years of experience running Kubernetes in production. And as part of that, the um, distribution layer that we created, we are now in the process of productizing and we're calling it Weave Kubernetes Platform. Uh, and if you've heard the term GitOps, it's a very GitOps aware platform for um, what you want to do in production to run Kubernetes in production. Uh, and as part of that, sometimes people need some help getting on their journey. So we do offer consulting training and support and leverage those four years of experience. So if you are interested in any of that, please check out weave.works or feel free to reach out to us and we'd be happy to help you. So thanks for listening. A touch of housekeeping. Oh, sorry, we uh, need to add Radu's name here. Um, so again, this is our talk on Ignite. Uh, as I mentioned, it's based on Firecracker, so we're really lucky to have Radu here as one of our speakers. Um, and so these sessions, we usually aim for about 30 to 45 minutes. Um, if there are burning questions, then uh, we will extend, but we do a hard stop at 60. Like today, yesterday with CubeADM, <laughs> there are definitely questions right to the final minute, but um, usually we'll, you know, Keep it at about 30, 45, depending on how things go. Uh, in terms of our platform, we are using Zoom. Uh, as I mentioned, if you have any questions, uh, please use the chat box. And um, 
if you can't find it, sometimes hitting escape will get you out of full screen mode and that will help you find the button on the top left corner of your screen to find the chat box. Uh, and reminder, when you chat, please make sure that you're sending your message to all panelists and attendees or to everyone, depending on which version you have, uh, so that other people can see your questions. Uh, and especially if you're answering other people's questions, make sure you do that so they can see your answers. Um, if you have anything burningly private, then of course you can message me directly. So with that, uh, what we'll do is we'll have Lucas start with just a very, very brief sort of definition and explanation of what Ignite is, how it works with Firecracker. Uh, then we'll shift to Radu, who do about 10 minutes on sort of giving the explanation and background of what Firecracker is. Uh, and then we'll go back to Lucas, who will go on and go into a little bit more of a deep dive. So we'll reserve uh, questions toward the end so that um, we'll sort of talk about sort of the value and the description. And then in the end, if you guys want to go deep into architecture or whatever, then we will have the end for those questions. So I hope that works for everybody. And with that, I'll hand it over to Lucas. Thank you, Tamar. Cool. Um, hi, I'm Lucas, as Tamar said, and um, I'm one of the, the creators of this Ignite project. Um, we're heavily relying on Firecracker, which is really awesome, an awesome product. And actually, one of the, the key things why, why we created Ignite is that we, we liked Firecracker, but wanted to mesh it with cloud native tools that were familiar to other people. So to take advantage of the isolation that, Fire, that Firecracker gives, which Radu will deep dive into, but also use the same Docker UX that, um, that many of you are familiar with to keep it simple, integrate with uh, the normal Docker images, those kinds of distribution mechanisms, and finally integrate GitOps in, in here to, for production environments and uh, Declarative, declarative state of what should be running. So that is the, the really short introduction to what Ignite is, and I'm, I'm going to deep dive into it later. But now over to Radu. Excellent. Radu, let me know if I need to stop sharing or if you can just take it. Uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll start my sharing in a minute. So um, hello, everyone. I'm, I'm Radu, and thanks, Lucas, for, uh, for that uh, introduction. We're also very happy to... Uh, to see how Ignite works with uh, with Firecracker and in general uh, what it has to offer. Um, so in my talk, I'll just in my in my section, I'll, I'll basically just go over um, why Firecracker exists and what it is, uh, and basically what it provides, um, and then a little bit about uh, about our um, roadmap going forward and uh, how, well, let's say, um, uh, how Firecracker is an open source project and what's happening in that in that space. Okay, so let's see if the sharing works. I'm supposed to have kicked you out now from the other from your sharing. Okay. Yes. Uh, Yay! It worked. Cool. So, um, just a, a firecracker in, in one line is a open source virtualization technology built for serverless compute. And here, there's a little bit of a background story. So, in uh, in the cloud, you generally um, you want uh, every customer's workload to be very well isolated from every other customer's workload. Obviously, nobody wants to have any kind of risk of, uh, uh, you know, uh, of uh, um, data sharing or anything like that. And so, um, what the what the traditional technology to use here is um, basically a virtualization barrier. So every customer gets uh, its own, his own virtual machine, his or her own virtual machine, no matter what workload they're running. So. Um, you know, is it a, an, an uh, instance? Is it a container? Is it a Lambda function? You will have uh, a virtual machine. This is a, a security barrier that uh, uh, we never want to compromise on. Uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of defense in depth going on here, but the virtualization part, um, because it's also uh, very much uh, supported by hardware, is something that that we consider to be fundamental. And this works very well for uh, you know running uh, big uh, EC2 instances, for example, that have a set amount of memory and disk uh, and uh, CPU usage. Well, when you run a Lambda function or a container uh, whose uh, resource usage is a lot more variable, it turns out that uh, um, it's not very efficient to, uh, to actually uh, have a slice up a big physical machine into, uh, into fixed virtual machines. Um, Containers, on the other hand, like a uh, run C and things like that, they're awesome at this because you get implicit uh, memory and CPU over subscription unless you, you know, you 
uh, use C groups to avoid that. So um, what, we were, what we realized that what we were looking for was to maintain the secure isolation that we have um, with virtual machines, but then kind of get the, uh, get the uh, efficiency and speed that we see in containers. And uh, you know, over the past years, uh, technologies have appeared in, uh, you know, in, uh, in Linux uh, that support this. Uh, so we basically set out to create uh, a, uh, a virtual machine uh, monitor, is the technical word, that has these features. Um, and Firecracker is what we, what we achieved. Um, we, uh, we maintain all of, uh, all of the virtual um, barriers that, uh, that we have, uh, that, we, that are required to have proper isolation. Uh, we, uh, we encourage a defense and depth, depth, depth model. So for example, with Ignite, uh, uh, I think uh, if, I, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Lucas, there is, a, uh, there is another layer of the usual container, um, uh, let's say um, isolation barriers outside of Firecracker. Uh, and this is the, the right thing to do. Um, we also provide like a jailer binary uh, if you don't run Firecracker with Ignite. So you should never just run Firecracker on its own. We also have rate limiting that uh, helps having uh, good neighbors uh, when, when you're sharing um, a lot of containers on the same host. And then um, the, the important part here is um, a very important part to actually make use of this efficiently is starting really, really fast. So. Uh, when you think about using these things at scale, you want to start lots of uh, containers or sandboxes in a very short period of time. And so we optimized the startup time down to 125 milliseconds for Linux. Um, the actual machine itself, like the virtual machine, starts in about uh, four milliseconds and the rest is the Linux uh, um, boot time. We also focused a lot on efficiency. So basically, um, if you want to pack a lot of these on a single host so you can get really good use of your of your hardware resources, um, the overhead of each virtual machine monitor will get multiplied. And so we worked a lot to, uh, to keep uh, our overhead under five megabytes. Um, so what you can do uh, in effect is uh, run lots of, of micro VMs uh, per host. We call them micro VMs. That, technically speaking, they're just a VM, but we, uh, we uh, set some very hard boundaries for us to, uh, as far as uh, the performance and the capabilities. Uh, and so we're kind of using the micro VM to differentiate uh, things like that. So for example, uh, we have a demo where you can start uh, 4,000 uh, virtual machines, uh, micro VMs on a um, on an um, EC2 uh, host uh, in just uh, a minute and a bit. Um, and then you can keep, uh, for example, uh, killing and, uh, and spawning a uh, hundred more every second. Um, so how do we achieve this? Like what's the architecture? Um, in Firecracker, basically what we did is uh, we took building blocks that, that existed and uh, kind of just uh, went all out to optimize them and combine them in the right way to achieve these capabilities. And now if you look at our roadmap, we're, we're taking things a, a bit further, but more on that uh, later. So um, on the left side here, you can see like the, the platform at the bottom is basically a, uh, a bare metal server. Um, this is a, an actual physical machine. It's not a virtual machine that you can get uh, in the cloud. and then uh, the the orange uh, slices uh, at the bottom of those rectangles are basically the virtual machine monitor process. And then within them, uh, there is the actual um, virtual machine. So basically the virtual CPUs uh, of your virtual machine are threads within the uh, Firecracker process. There's one Firecracker process for every virtual machine. This is part of our uh, security model. Uh, we don't, we share nothing between virtual machines. And this means that you can uh, kind of um, um, kill things uh, arbitrarily uh, without affecting the rest of the machines on the host. One of our tenets is that you should only be limited by the resources of your host. Uh, Firecracker should get out of the way as much as possible and be as easy to use as possible. Though I think uh, Lucas will have more on this. So it's kind of easy to use from a system engineering perspective. It is not, uh, you know, the kind of software that um, that has a, uh, a very natural, um, let's say, uh, a high-level interface on its own. Um, right, so um, basically this is, uh, this is uh, the architecture from the host point of view. Then if you zoom in and within one firecracker process, um, the, those, uh, those uh, rectangles at the bottom are kind of the facilities we provide. So uh, KVM, which is Linux's uh, built-in hypervisor, provides the uh, virtualization barrier uh, and, uh, and some basic emulation. And then we have uh, on firecracker side, we emulate uh, network storage, we apply rate limiting to these. Uh, we need to do this in process for scaling reasons. So 
Linux, Linux has its own mechanisms of, mechanisms for this, but when you have hundreds of uh, or thousands of VMs, they don't scale very well. Uh, yeah, so basically provide network storage, uh, rate limiting, and an API that you can use to control things. Um, over the past month, uh, we've uh, taken in feedback from both our internal AWS customers, so these are teams within Amazon that are using Firecracker, and from the open source community. Um, and um, uh, we basically listed a number of features. Some of them came as uh, proposals. Um, uh, some of them came from the team. Um, and uh, you know, we took we took for people's feedback and basically uh, came out like uh, just a few days ago. We finalized our roadmap. Um, since we're an open source project, we put it in a GitHub project. Um, it's not um, it's not something set in stone. So uh, obviously, we can add things there as long as they um, um, are aligned with our mission to provide a. a, a you know, a building block for serverless computer uh, containers and functions. Um, some of the cool things there that uh, might might also be relevant for Ignite in the future uh, is the snapshotting feature. Um, we can basically uh, kind of uh, start a VM from a future from from not from the beginning from the boot, but from some future point that you've uh, that you've uh, snapshotted previously. And finally, Firecracker is an open source project. Um, when we started working on it uh, back in December 2017, we actually forked from another uh, VMM return in Rust called CrossVM. Uh, we realized that um, the way we're going might actually be useful for the um, broader container community. Uh, and so we actually started development on GitHub from the beginning. We eventually open sourced at uh, reInvent in 2018. Uh, and uh, you know, we've, since then we've been working uh, in the open on the GitHub repository. About a fifth of our contributions right now are from the open source community. I think Lucas has a few as well. And um, and basically, uh, more than just the code, uh, we've gotten so much feedback and ideas and, bu and really, really well documented bug reports that uh, I, you know, we're very, very happy to continue uh, working with the open source community. And this also goes the other way. Firecracker has been integrated in a few uh, projects. Uh, we're talking here about Ignite, but there's also Kata Containers, Unique, OSV. Um, and there's another team in Amazon that's working on, on a Container D integration. And we really uh, we're happy to see all of these uh, integrations, and uh, we're happy to work with these teams and provide, uh, you know, uh, as uh, uh, whatever is needed from our side uh, to um, uh, to to support these integrations. And uh, yeah, with that, I'll uh, turn it over to Lucas. Cool. Thank you. Let's see if I also can start sharing my screen. There we go. Perfect. So let's start. Thank you, Radu, for that interaction. Um, so let's start with with the history, uh, a bit at least. So I, in January or something, I came across Firecracker and thought it was was really cool. I started researching, but as I'm, well, let, let's say. I've been developing a lot of different things um, in the cloud native space, but I'm not a KVM developer. So I started using Firecracker, but found it really hard to use because I'm not particularly um, good at that space, although I know the, the basics. So what I found is that the community could benefit a lot uh, by, by a tool that is higher level uh, with its distinct scope. As, as we saw, Firecracker enables many different projects to, to do various different things in this space, but we, we thought it would uh, be good with a developer-focused um, project and, and higher level that abstract away um, these, for example, the, the Firecracker API server and this low-level stuff that you saw on the, the other picture. And um, at this time, uh, funnily enough, I was in the Finnish uh, military because Finland has a mandatory uh, conscription. So we, I, I worked with, uh, with, with, with some, some folks there um, on the internal infrastructure. And we had really specific requirements, so we couldn't use containers, although we tried um, due to technical limitations. So we started using Firecracker and this idea um, grew. So uh, upon uh, leaving the military, I asked for permission to open source the, because I had, during this time, I'd learned a lot uh, about how Firecracker worked and now felt confident 
with how to use it. Um, and uh, was permitted because it was really generic, generic stuff um, applicable to, to many different environments. So that's what I went ahead and did. Um, I hired my, my friend in the, from the military to WeWorks and we've been doing, doing stuff on the, the project over the summer. So really, really um, excited to see this, this take off. So what we have here is um, in, in this blog post, um, if you've seen it, we, we talk about an open source virtual machine with a container UX and built-in GitOps management. Um, so what, what does this mean? We, it means that we, we take the, the knowledge and experience from Kubernetes, Docker, and similar tools and integrate them with Firecracker. And we, we reuse the, the whole ecosystem around containers. Uh, for example, Docker Hub images can be, can be run as, as um, real VMs in Firecracker, thanks to Ignite. But we also uh, pull in the, the operational knowledge that, that Tamao talked about uh, from WeWorks in, in the form of GitOps. And uh, also from Kubernetes, we, we know that declarative configuration works really well. Um, in expressing deployment services and the desired state in general. And we, we take that, uh, those findings and apply them to virtual machines um, in a way that is not that commonly done, especially not in open source. And uh, it, it should be said that, again, this is an open source project. Uh, we're its newest uh, at the moment. And uh, if you want to help out, we would be really excited to see you here. Uh, we've all already got um, more than, I think, 20 PRs in, the sen uh, like in a week from, from the community. And we're, we're really happy to, to see that, um, that pattern and uh, want to see that continue. Also, a lot of issue requests, which we, we have already uh, fixed most of them. Um, so that's, uh, that's really good. So now you wonder, why do we need a container-minded virtualization um, tool? Well, um, I'm coming from the uh, Kubernetes background um, and have been de developing KubeADM, for example. So KubeADM is a tool that gets you started with um, bootstrapping Kubernetes in, in basically no time. And this is what we went through uh, in yesterday's uh, user group, uh, WeWorks online user group, group meeting. And basically, if you run Kubernetes in it, you get a, a control plane node or a master, and then you run Kubernetes join to, to join new nodes to this cluster. And um, with that um, developer experience in mind, with, which WeWorks also helps start, um, then um, we, we started thinking about if we can, if we can do similar um, similar tools in this space. And if we combine these two, we actually get really interesting effects too. So if we can set up many secure VMs really fast, Radu talked about like four milliseconds for starting the, the virtual machine and then 125 milliseconds for um, booting Linux, then and, and running 4,000 machi uh, virtual machines on the same physical host simultaneously, that is extremely powerful. And uh, for example, we could, uh, it could be used for testing. So like we need integration tests uh, running for some specific thing, but we have, um, the, the security model is a good example there. So, so we, we run integration project, uh, tests for some project, and then we don't trust the code that is um, running there. So we want that extra isolation, not just, just containers. So testing their CI, uh, ephemeral workloads, uh, that can really uh, be, be key. And um, in the military, we had, um, let's say, very special requirements in the, the apps we were building. And sometimes we needed uh, custom kernels. Um, so that's, that's good. Um, good use cases, but also multi-tenancy 
is a is a big one if we want to to host many multi tenant uh, multiple tenants at the same time. The the last and maybe the most interesting is the ability to to once in Git specify that I want three VMs, and when I have this these VM specifications checked into Git, I can run ignite in daemon mode and say reconcile so that you make these three vms the actual state so you make them running um, and then we can use git as like uh, an audit log and many are uh, benefits in, in running these vms so we can see what happened over time and now getting back to kubeadm if we combine ignite and kubeadm or any other Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes tool like what WeWorks has, um, we can now boot, say, three VMs with Ignite. It takes like a second each. And um, now we have three VMs. We can run Kubernetes in these or bootstrap our Kubernetes. And that takes maybe a minute to download all the Kubernetes binaries. And boom, we have a um, Kubernetes cluster with uh, what Radu uh, said with snapshotting and, and that kind of future possibilities, we might even see uh, instant on Kubernetes clusters in, in like, well, <laughs> some, some, just some milliseconds. So all those things are really, um, really interesting if we, um, when, when we now live in, the, in this new world where virtualization actually is, is super fast in the, in the uh, sense of milliseconds. So I talked about the GitOps thing. We'll look at that later. Um, here is the Docker CLI. Um, and uh, yes, I talked about this kubeadm AJ thing. And there is the, the history. So OK, getting, getting to the open source project. Um, we have, well, you can go check out the code if you want. Uh, we have a logo, yes. We have how um, a bit a uh, bit how this works, but um, I'm going to go through the, the first section of this. Um, so now that we have the UX of Docker and we use Docker images, or technically speaking, OCI images. So OCI is um, a new found, uh, foundation inside of Linux Foundation. Um, that hosts the, the open containers initiative specification of what a container is. So Docker and all the other container runtimes implement OCI. So that means that any container we have from any provider works automatically with, um, with Ignite, because we also impl uh, implement this spec. Um, and now that we have reused this, this uh, Docker images, we don't have any need for VDI or VDMK or KuCow two images that you before needed custom tools like Packer or um, similar uh, virtual box building tools. Because um, now we, we just do a Docker build and we put in what we want and boom, some second later it's running. Another uh, interesting thing is that uh, where we're decoupling the kernel and uh, the base image. So you build your base image, and um, I could actually show what that could look like. We have some examples here. So to get an idea of, of what building a base image looks like, we here have um, from Ubuntu in Docker Hub, we run apt get, we install the packages we need. Um, these are not in the default. Um, Docker image from Docker Hub, but we feel that, for example, an open SSH server is, is pretty good to have in a VM if you, if you want to do that, or systemd is pretty essential to running a VM, etc. But this is everything that's needed. You do Docker bo build, boom, and then you do Ignite run. So that's an, um, that's an example of, of how, how a building a, an image works. And then the kernel works in a similar way. You just put your kernel, optional modules, uh, and uh, you do a Docker build again, or a similar tool. 
Now with Ignite Run, these are going to be combined. And uh, you choose the kernel image, you choose uh, the base image. We have a default kernel image. So if you don't want to care about that, no problem. Um, and yeah, Firecracker goes ahead. So networking is also set up automatically because the, the VM gets the same IP as any container started on the host would do would get. Cool. So maybe now is the time for a live demo. Yes. Um, let's see. Ignite PS. So, Actually, hey, Lucas. Yeah. Yes. Um, I know we're going to do questions at the end, but I thought maybe just one was. Yes. We, yeah, we could. We could yeah. Just, just one, because he's asking, um, does Ignite work only on bare metal instance types? Just maybe would make sense to clarify now. Yes, yes. Um, so you need, for Firecracker to execute, um, Radu shows the, the architecture diagram, and you need KVM to, to use Firecracker, basically, as, as Firecracker is a KVM implementation, you could say. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Radu, but uh, I think that some providers support nested virtualization so that you could, you could have two layers of VM. So first you, have a, uh, first you have a physical machine, you create a really large, say, uh, 16 CPU uh, virtual machine in that, and inside of your large uh, virtual machine, you could create a smaller, as long as that provider supports nested virtualization. Um, but generally, it, it needs uh, physical machines, yes. So that's... Um, yeah. So just yeah. Uh, what you said is exactly right. So um, for, um, if uh, you either need a physical machine or you need a, um, a virtual machine that in turn supports nested virtualization. Um, the, there will be some performance hit with the nested virtualization. Um, that will really depend on your application. It might uh, render it unusable. It might be completely unnoticeable. So that's uh, that's something that you know. Uh, if someone wants to look at this, they should simply test out. Um, yeah. So I think that's it in a nutshell. Cool. Cool. Um, great. So then I'll I'll continue with the and, and yes, this is my this is my laptop. Um, I'm I'm doing it while running Zoom and Slack and whatever. Um, but Ignite PS, uh, we're not running anything at the moment. Um, if I want to run or Let's, let's take a look at the getting started example. Um, we have a um, docs usage here, um, which shows how to do it. And also shout outs to, uh, to one contributor which created a YouTube demo of, a uh, YouTube video with a demo on how to use Ignite. Check that out if you wanna see it live. Or Joe Bida, who had a, thank God it's Kubernetes session on what Ignite is and how it works. Uh, it's like, one hour and 40 minutes. Uh, it was really a long session uh, on all the different things. And he went into great detail, like really technical detail about how it works. So um, what we're going to do here is basically, yeah, this, this has a lot of all of the different operations that exist. Um, what we're going to do for the fast demo is I instead of doing Docker run, uh, with the image you just saw, basically just playing Ubuntu from Docker Hub and apt add um, systemd, uh, essentially. Uh, we're gonna run this Docker image and uh, maybe I should, yeah, so there we go. Um, ignite run the Docker image. Then how many CPUs do we want? Two. How many RAM memory do I want? I want one gigabyte. Then uh, with the SSH flag, Ignite automatically creates uh, a new uh, private and public key and copies it in, into the VM so that we can easily later do Ignite SSH and it actually works. And then we're going to name it my VM. So there we go. It has created the, the VM with name my VM and started it um, in, Doc, in, in Docker, actually. We're going to get to this a bit later. But now uh, Ignite PS we see that we're running Ignite Ubuntu. We're using a default 419 kernel. It was created 15 seconds ago. 
um, four gigabyte of disk, two CPUs, uh, one gigabyte of RAM, and it got the IP uh, from, from Docker, which is the default. And um, if we want to check the logs, we can do ignite logs, my VM. We can see that if we go really to the top here, we see that Firecracker is executing, then Linux starts here, and Linux starts to boot. And this takes not many milliseconds, and then systemd has booted. So that was that, and uh, if we do just ignite, we can see that it really you know, implements the, the Docker commands that you're familiar with. So we have PS, we have logs. Uh, next maybe would be to do, uh, where do we, SSH, Ignite SSH. It has attached to, but SSH is maybe a bit better. Um, so there we go. Let's see if this boots or if this SSH process works. Well, I'm gonna attach instead. Root. There we go. So inside of the virtual machine, I can check out what's running. Uh, or, there we go. So we have has been in it, which is systemd in this case. Um, some a couple of services. We can check the the kernel. That's 419. As, uh, exactly as we we thought. Um, we have we can check the free memory, that is, one gigabyte as we said. We have um, IP adder. See that it's it's the right IP. Uh, we can ping Google. If we wanted to get content from the internet. Uh, and lastly, we should we think we have two processors. So check. CPU info and yes, we do. This is one and there is the other. So this all went went pretty good. Um, we we're now in in this virtual machine and we could run kubeadm here for example. And uh, there we go. So what's next? We we can check the ignite images. Um, I have a few other too, but here is ignite. Ubuntu, and the size is, is fairly minimal uh, for being a real virtual machine that you can boot. Um, this is then Ubuntu from Docker Hub is like 80 or 100 maybe, and then the, the stuff we add on top. Uh, we can also check Ignite kernels and see that we have this, this kernel. It's about 50 megabytes. Great. So then we've done the um, the getting started, uh, getting started uh, guide to show a, expand on a bit more about how this works. So as Radu said, um, you should not run the Firecracker binary directly on host, but instead for defense in depth, um, for designing a system with defense in depth, run it in some kind of isolation method, and um, you could use the the jailer binary as as he mentioned. But also what we're doing is we're sandboxing the firecracker process inside of, um, inside of a container. And that gives us uh, many other benefits, benefits too. We can, um, first of all, we, we, get, um, we can uh, run a long, long running de uh, daemon somewhere. So the firecracker process needs to be, uh, be running at all times the VM uh, is running. So we need somewhere to, to put this long running process. And um, we want to integrate with, with networking. If we do a Docker inspect on this and grep for IP, oh. we, we see that the container, what Docker gave to the container that, that Ignite started was this IP. And it was then transferred by Ignite to the VM. Um, and we can do docker top and see what's running inside of this, uh, this VM. We can see that we have a small ignite spawn binary, which start, basically starts Firecracker and tells it what to do. This is the, the API server that Radu was talking about. 
um, it's listening, Firecracker is listening on a socket, and Ignite Spawn tells, uh, tells Firecracker what to do according to the user specifications. And then Firecracker is, is executing all time uh, the, the container is running. So that's, um, that's more on the, the Maybe I could also stop the, the virtual machine. It's as easy as ignite. And ignite RM, my VM. Hey, Lucas, can you hear us? Yes. OK, just making sure. Uh, right, there we go. I don't know why Zoom started playing tricks with me. Uh, <laughs> can you still hear me? Yes, we can see and hear you. I don't see your screen anymore. And earlier, we actually could yes. see it, but it seemed like you couldn't see what we saw, <laughs> unless we had a frozen image. Oh, well. Uh, OK. Um, I could. What do we have? Do we have any questions? I could maybe start the the screen sharing again, or take questions, or both. Um, OK. Um, wasn't clear to me if you still had some steps left. Did I miss something? Mm. So it was one of those Linux Zoom challenges. I OK, can you see my screen now? Yes, we can. OK. Um, not that much other than this uh, architecture picture that I wanted to, to show. So oh, hold um, on, then let's pause then, because um, we talked about, so we got, yes. we're actually at 45. So if we go to the end, so we'll have 15 minutes. Oh, right. We talked yes. about how this would be a perfect yes. time to Thank incorporate Q&A and any kind of architecture level discussions for Firecracker and or Ignite. So um, I'll start the questions. So um, King didn't ask the first question. Thanks. Um, so actually talking about WKP here, um, he said, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our Kubernetes platform that we're coming out with, um, he said, I saw that you can use it with Footloose and about the same time that I heard about Ignite. So, I guess he's sort of asking the group as well as you guys, is there anyone running WKP and Footloose and Ignite or just WKP and Ignite? Um, also, I'm not so sure how familiar you are with Footloose. Maybe you can also explain to others what Footloose is if they don't know. Yes, um, right. So <laughs> funny enough, yes. Uh, the answer to the question is yes. Um, if you see, um, one analogy that I, that I tend to, to draw is that uh, the really low-level component of Docker is called Run C, and um, then Ignite is um, what what Run C or what Docker is to Run C, Ignite is to Firecracker. So Firecracker is a low-level component that <laughs> like does the actual work, and uh, then um, Ignite is the, the thing that does a um, user-facing stuff and integrating with the, the uh, specific ecosystem. 
But for Docker, we also have Docker Compose, which takes care of running a set of containers. And Footloose can be used with, with um, normal Docker containers, but uh, we're also, I have a branch which is not yet merged, merged but yes, uh, we're running Footloose um, uh, that calls Ignite for per each VM. So Footloose is a, is a project we could, uh, there we go. And uh, it basically has a, a more, even more higher level definition uh, of, let's see if there's somewhere here. Uh, there we go. So you, you have like a, a, a cluster or a set of machines. You say how many machines you want and what images they should use, what ports to open and so, so on and so forth. And this is like, like Docker Compose for Ignite to uh, once we, I'm just gonna merge the, the branch <laughs> that, I, that I have doing that. Uh, and yes, we, when you have created a set of machines here, say three machines with CentOS 7 and Ignite, you can, you can run WKP uh, on, these, um, on these VMs. I actually have a, a screencast showing that. And I also, I can just plug in that if you have general questions that we might or might not have time for uh, during this, uh, you can go and check out the FAQ in the Ignite repo. And here we have technical answers and non-technical ones to very common questions about Ignite and how it differs. Also, if you want to, to see the, the GitOps stuff, which we don't have time to um, demo today, uh, you can either hit up the blog post here or you go to, to ignite slash GitOps and um, the declarative configuration looks similar to this. So it looks like a Kubernetes object, but it's, it's not. It's just using the same conventions. Awesome. So those actually, are two and the architecture diagrams here. Awesome. So that actually perfectly leads into our next question. So as um, Radu had mentioned, you know, there's Ignite, there's Kata containers, and there's actually other technologies as part of the open source ecosystem. Uh, so as part of that, though, someone was asking, you know, how does Fire, um, sorry, Kata containers compare to Ignite? And I noticed you had a bit on your documentation here. Do you want to, either both of you give some of those high level things, how they differ? So uh, the, the really, really simple answer is Ignite runs VMs and the other solutions run the containers, right? So if I wanna, if I wanna boot uh, Ignite VM with Firecracker, I, I have to include SBIN in it in my, uh, in my image, in my Docker image. So I, I need to have some kind of init system that like systemd or openrc or or similar that actually takes care and, and initializes everything in the system so that it, it's capable of doing stuff that a normal VM would. Uh, whereas with Kata containers, Gvisor and Firecracker Containerd, they take a container, they just wrap the isolation around and uh, not actually do anything to that container. So it, uh, I mentioned run C, which is the thing that runs any container. Uh, according to the uh, OCI specification. And run C is, is also running in Kata containers. It's using run C in Gvisor and uh, Firecracker container D um, exactly. So, so the container doesn't know anything that it it's, would be modified in some way. It's just executing in another context with these isolation methods like Kata containers, Gvisor and Firecracker container D. So how these work are that they, see that, oh, uh, somebody did a Docker run and wanted to run Nginx, for example. And uh, then in, in that container, that Nginx container, there's only Nginx, the Nginx binary. And, uh, but they, they express their interest in using Firecracker container D. So what Firecracker container D is then gonna do is that it's, it's booting up a small, really, really, really minimal um, VM and with Firecracker it goes fast, so it's it's uh, really good. And then inside of that VM, uh, there's a special init system, and uh, that init system's job is basically to to handle the communication and run run C. So 
and C is running inside of this minimal um, minimal um, VM that that was just bootstrap on the on the host, and the but the container still boots with with um, nginx as pid one. So so there's nothing that changes other than that um, there's more isolation because the context is is a, a VM. Whereas Ignite is really about running real VMs. So on on top of Ignite, you can run Kubernetes. Um, I, I, there's another demo in here, uh, which I, I talked about the Kubeadm thing. So if you um, if you go to images and Kubeadm, you you will get a guide on how to run Kubeadm in AJ mode on top of Ignite VMs. So you run Ignite there, uh, copy in the, the Kubernetes stuff we need, and then you create some some more um, workers. And inside of these VMs, you run Kubeadm. You run uh, in it, and you run kubernetes join. So that's totally a different thing than running a container, which can only have like, which only should run one pro process, ideally. Excellent. Um, we actually have a question from Radu as well to you. Can you check the memory used from the host point of view? And Radu, you're here, so you can <laughs> you can no, elaborate I, on your question. <laughs> yeah, I think Lucas uh, shut down the VM in the meantime. I was just gonna point out that. Um, while from within the VM, uh, the guest will see whatever memory you gave it. From the host point of view, you only see the memory that was used up to that point, uh, which is it's it's uh, the default behavior of a process in Linux, and uh, it's uh, how the um, Firecracker VMs are set up by default. It was just an example of how we get the density uh, up to where it is, but it's not important now. Awesome. Well, thanks, also, everybody. finally. Uh, also, finally, that uh, I asked the same question uh, from Radu and the team uh, when when exploring Firecracker, uh, if if this can be done. But yeah, <laughs> well, thanks for for the answer from my side too. Yeah. Right. Well, we're getting toward the end, so just checking to see if there are any last questions. Oh, and there is. Uh, yes, of course, we can send the link uh, to screencasts and all that. So we'll be sending info afterwards. Any last ones? Uh, I'll let you guys think about it while I um, I will venture to take over, even though you might want to take over again in case people ask. But we're getting to that time. Yeah. So. I, if I can say just one minute before, sure. Uh, sure. I, could, I could conclude my thing with um, oh, that we, this is again as a firecracker. It's an open source project. We would welcome any contributions. Yes. Uh, we we had, as said, already a, a, a couple, 20 or so being accepted in the first week. Um, we we want to, to see that continue. We have, um, today, actually, I, I've been marking stuff with Help Wanted um, for for stuff that is, is really good for, for getting started. And uh, there's many other two than this. Um, and in the next coming uh, zero uh, 05 release, we'll... Um, extend upon the GitOps functionalities. Uh, we'll hopefully add ContainerD. So now it's running with Docker uh, isolation, but we'll also add ContainerD to the supported runtimes. Um, of course, normal uh, like general improvements. Uh, well, in, if you're familiar with Kubernetes, we're we're gonna add a static pod similar feature. So it, like you you can drop. Uh, uh, what you want to run uh, a manifest like like this uh, in a, a directory and ignite is gonna gonna run that for you hopefully uh, with the help of, of the firecracker team we're gonna get um, firecracker and ignite working on raspberry pi i my, my raspberry pi 4 uh, was re received today i have it here behind me um, so excited to see that happen with arm 64 support um, Integrate Ignite with Footloose. I'm going to get that PR submitted. Uh, and many other uh, exciting things. So if you're interested in the project, um, join us. File an issue if, if something's broken. Or um, join our Weave community Slack and the Ignite channel. Excellent. Yes, that's a perfect segue. I will switch to my slides and share that information so you guys can see it. I'm trying to get. Zoom to work. <laughs> so hopefully you guys can see my slides. 
So yes, on that note, uh, so just a heads up uh, in the coming weeks, like I said, this is a series if you've come for the first time. Uh, we've got talks with Portworks, with Solo.io, um, we have talks on GitOps and other things. So um, the best place, if you haven't joined us already, is this meetup group. That's probably our most single uh, clear source of truth on what's to come. Uh, as Lucas mentioned, we have our Slack channel where we have um, or, or where we have a Ignite um, channel as well, right? That's, I believe that's where we um, yes, you can come yes. to ask and answer questions if you start becoming part of the community. Um, as part of that, of course, this is um, an exciting week project. Um, our DX team, as well as our engineers, will be um, deeply involved to make sure that we keep it going. But we're very interested in having people can um, join and contribute because Lucas will be going to university soon. And so even though we'll be bothering him, we want to make sure that um, we already had a bunch of PRs coming through, but that's something that we'd love to make sure because I know at some point Lucas is actually going to have to work on his studies. <laughs> so um, with that, again, also my name is uh, Tomo and my email is at tomoweek.works. If you have any questions on any of these, um, you'll be getting a follow-up email with links and such, but if there's anything else you need, uh, feel free to reach out to me. So with that, thank you so much for coming and all your questions. Thank you to Lucas and Radu and uh, you mentioned Stacy, our community manager. So thanks so much and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks guys. Bye. Thank you as well. Bye-bye.